hey so far the new intake has done very well and just my normal driving which once in a while pushes the hammer down and everything like that so far on this tank I've gotten 448 miles off of it and an average of 27.9 and that's a mixture between lots of city and some highway miles but most of it being city and I'd say that's pretty dang good because the original sticker says 17 city and 27 highway so I'm pretty much getting the highway all the way around average so I'd say that's really good it's probably equal to or better than before maybe just slightly better because I have been on the gas more since the intake was since I put the intake on so okay well let's see here yeah so with this tank it says I have like 60 miles left and I've done 448 on this tank so far so that's looking pretty good for fuel economy considering a lot of it or most of it was city driving and factory city driving is 17 miles to the gallon so I'd have to say I'm pretty impressed well we'll take this for a little drive and I'll show you a couple other things on this and I have to say I'm very impressed with this new intake it's really good great response great low end torque increase and great fuel economy as well you'll find yourself pushing the gas more so that kind of makes it hard to tell the difference between fuel economy from how I did my intake before and now but it definitely is an improvement overall a great improvement overall all right more for later
an SRT version of the 300 recently. I kind of made my own. I uh, set up my own SRT. As you can see, just kind of look around the body and a little bit more SRT like. Found these neat little stickers to put on the wheels. Kind of give it that. This vehicle is very sporty now and I'm backing it up with the look. SRT6 one for the dash as you can see in there doesn't that look nice kind of adds to the sport package SRT version of my 300 so I kind of created my own SRT package intake exhaust Real good, much better low end torque, better fuel economy. I need to raise some money because it's going to cost around $5,500 for the supercharger I want for this. So that's going to be something I need to raise money for. So I may put up a, a little fund page to help me attain that money to get that supercharger for this because that would really bring this over the top. A supercharged V6 all-wheel drive that would really complete the SRT and put it over the top so that's one of my goals and I don't have the 5,500 but I'm gonna try to raise it we'll see how many of everybody would like to see this with a big root supercharger sitting on top instead of this intake manifold that would really bring this thing up in the 400 horse and high 400 pound-feet of torque range which would really make this vehicle perform. I don't like to run the insulation on the hood because I like to keep my hood cool. See how I don't run that cover for the engine? That keeps all the heat on all the sensors. And I like to keep as much heat off of my manifold and sensors as possible. So I remove all the shield, all the shielding that's on the hood. It's kind of like a, uh, a really big insulation it keeps all the heat on the engine and of course that's all over the intake all over the uh, intake manifold and everything so not running the hood insulation and the engine cover makes this engine so much cooler I could do a 30 minute drive open the hood and everything still feels fairly cool on top unlike the factory everything's hot as hell under the hood so okay we're gonna take a little drive Another thing I always do is when I first get in the car, I disengage traction control and it puts it automatically into all wheel drive sport mode. And I like that a lot better. The overall drivability of the vehicle and acceleration is like much better than without. So I push that little button right there. It removes the traction control and lets the all wheel drive do its job. And gives it a sport mode and the shifting is much better too so we're going to take this for a little spin here okay here we go we'll hear what this car sounds like with the windows up and with my intake and exhaust that I've done on this you can you can hear the intake and exhaust quite a bit but it sounds nice I like it how it sounds inside the car it sounds very nice I, I like it like that some people don't like an exhaust sound in the car but I do so let's put the windows down a bit okay let's hear the windows down a little bit and see how we like it here we go sounds with the windows down 
and I'm going to top off the fuel at the gas station and I'll let you know how many miles per gallon I got hand calculated basically how many gallons I pumped in and basically you take the mileage that you drove which in this case will probably be like about 460 divided into the number of gallons you put in the tank and that'll give you your hand calculated miles per gallon so I'm going to do that and give you guys the results. Okay, more to follow. Alright, well, here's the mileage I got. And I pumped in 17 gallons, 17.27 gallons. So basically divided, took 473, divided into 17.27 gallons, and that equaled about 27.7 so this thing was really correct the est the uh the fuel mileage that the car said was actually correct when i calculated it with the calculator so it's pretty much spot on so i got 473 miles on this tank at 20 point or 27.7 miles to the gallon which is really good on fuel economy all right well there you have it and that was a, a great mixture between a lot of street driving and some hills, quite a few hills, and some freeway driving. But to have that kind of an average with an intake and exhaust, that's a really good bang for your buck. Because I got a good deal on the intake and I designed the exhaust myself and had a exhaust shop do it. And I pointed out what to do and they did it. So. There you have it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and mad boosting.